Timmons, and I'm here today to speak to you about uh, guitar tone. I'm going to do uh, a kind of a rig rundown. I'm going to explain to you how I how I get my tone, how I you know use my pedals and my amp and my guitar in combination to try to get the sounds that I'm that I have in my head, my ultimate guitar tones, and uh, and how I use them in a live and studio uh, setting. So let's get started. I'm going to run down every tone that I use and uh, tell you about the, all the components. So I want to start off with uh, letting you know that everything that I'm running through today goes through the gig rig, which is uh, my good friend Daniel Steinhardt in London um, has a company called Gig Rig, and this is the G2, and it's my pedal switcher. And this one unit allows me to access turning on and off any pedal on my pedal board, um, but also sit, sending the signal to the amp, but also being able to change channels on the amp. So with one switch. I can either go to my tuner or my compressor on the clean channel or lead channel with a boost or whatever. So that's kind of ground, you know, ground zero for me. That, that, that's the controller. Okay. It's very well made. I love Daniel. He's a great guy, very genius kind of guy about tone. So uh, I've been using his, uh, his pedal switcher for a long time. And he's actually the guy that also helped me build my pedal board. He actually, well, he, he built my pedal board. I didn't have anything to do with it. I told him what I wanted, and he made it happen. Very quiet, very uh, very clean. Um, but I want to start off with the most important pedal on my pedal board, and that's my tuner. <laughs> I hope you have a tuner. Please use it. Um, that's a, really a, an important thing about tone is tuning. You know, if you're playing more than more than one note at a time, boy, they need to be in tune. I use a Sonic Research uh, Turbo Tuner, and it's. The most accurate one I found. Um, so I have a patch set up to where I can hit a switch and the amp goes uh, quiet. It's, it's nice to have a muted tuner because, you know, you don't want to be uh, tuning loudly on stage. So it's nice to have the quiet function so you can do it in private, not bother anybody, and get the guitar you know, the best in tune that you can. Of course... We do know, and hopefully you know, that the guitar is not a perfect instrument. Intonation is very difficult. And with experience, and the more you play, you start to realize, um, you know, how hard you press on the strings matter about intonation. Um, the, the setup of your personal guitar, you know, making sure the intonation is set correctly. And then even different chords and different keys will need slight changes to get them just right. Thirds. You know, the third of the chord, like in the, in the D major chord, the, uh, the F sharp. It sounds a little sharp to me, and I'm in tune, but I might. Little, little tricks along the way to try to sweeten your tuning in each way. See, that now it's coming up flat here. But the bottom line is, the tuner, I call it, I call it the liar. Because, well, it gets you close, but it's not true. Okay? So... Use it to get your guitar close, and then use your ear, um, because that will tell you if a chord is in tune or not. And uh, when I'm in the studio especially, I take great care in, uh, in trying to make sure that my tuning is good. Tommy Emanuel, who I think is maybe the greatest musician I've ever encountered, said that once where he says, what, what sets the men apart from the boys or the women apart from the girls is tuning. You know, what really sets out the great artist is tuning you think about eric johnson or joe satriani some of my favorite guitar players they're so in tune eric johnson especially he's figured out ways of 
even on these old vintage Stratocaster guitars, getting them very in tune, very difficult to do. So I admire these guys, and I've learned a lot from them and have become even, even more sensitive and aware of tuning the more that I play. So let's start um, t talking about my amplifier. And those of you that know my tone know that I've been using the Mesa Boogie Lone Star since about 2005 when they first, they first designed the amp. I was actually endorsing another amplifier at the time. And uh, my friend at Mesa Boogie uh, said, hey, we've got this new amp I think you're really going to like. And he, he brought me this prototype Lone Star combo. And I, I plugged into it and liked it and took it out to a gig that night. And immediately I recognized that, wow, this tone is fantastic. My cleans were really nice and full and bold and uh, could get a nice twang if I needed some country tones. And then the lead channel was incredible in that when I'm going for a distortion lead tone, I, I, I'm constantly trying to, to tame the treble, the, the fuzzy top end, because the more gain you have for the distortion, the brighter the tone can normally get. Um, so most amps I'll plug into, if it's the distortion channel, I'm always turning down the presence and turning down the treble, trying to get enough gain to where the notes can really s sustain and sing, but they're not being too bright. And it's a very difficult balance, and we'll talk more about that. But that's what I was, I was drawn to the Lone Star for that reason in that um, it just had this really bold, warm tone. I was turning up the treble and turning down the bass, which was completely counter what I would normally do with any other amp. So I thought, well, I think I've got a friend here, right? And then using, and it's, and it's not too much gain. It's not a lot of oversaturated um, uh, gain on the amp. It's just bold and full. And then you hit the front end if you need a little extra. Um, and I, I do that in several different ways. So that's, that's the main core amp. But let me start um, with just a, a pure clean tone. Let me let you hear the Lone Star without anything in front of it. So this is just the Lone Star clean. Okay. <laughs> So that's just just a Lone Star. That's my guitar. Basically, if I had a cable into the amp, that's what that amp sounds like. Um, and I could use just that channel with the pedals that I have and and be comfortable with all my tones. But I do use the lead channel for certain sounds. But the thing about the Lone Star is it really loves pedals. It really works well with a variety of pedals. Everything you know has their own personality through the amp. And that, not all amps are like that. So this one I've really grown to appreciate and use even more gain and distortion pedals in front of the amp, which I, I hadn't normally done years ago. So that's been great. But that being said, now almost every time you hear my clean sound, there's going to be uh, my Carl Martin signature compressor in front of it. I've got a, it's now a dual compressor where I've got two different modes. But now let me play, here's the, here's the clean channel with nothing in front of it again. Now let me turn on the compressor, and you're, you, what you're going to notice immediately is the volume change. Uh, I'm, I'm using this particular channel of the compressor more as a boost and less as a compressor. I've got controls over the threshold and the, uh, and, oh, excuse me, I've got controls. <laughs> what do they call it? They call it, they call it resonance, so, but uh, very little compression. It's mainly... <laughs> Here's no, here's with the compressor in. So again, not stepping on the signal too hard, which to a compressor, that's what it does. It compresses the sound. And what that can do, the compression can actually, you know, it kind of smooths out the dynamics of the lows and the highs and can make it sustain a bit. But again, in this, this setting, boost. So that's the main clean sound. Now, also, if you're familiar with my playing, you usually realize I, I generally have a bit of ambience on the tone, and I achieve that with my echo.
adding a little extra echo there. So now when I demonstrate some of the other tones, you're going to hear that. So let me talk about that as I go through the different cleans and gains and distortions. I, I prefer to play with that type of echo sound. Um, it just makes me feel like I've got a little halo around the note. It's, it gives it a space and it gives it um, the ability to sing more. Instead of just having a complete dry sound, which sounds fine, I just like to have that. I feel like it helps me be more vocal-like. Okay, so staying on the clean channel of the Lone Star, now I want to uh, – oh, I should, I should show you the clean channel that I like to use with the compressor, then also my, my G&I uh, analog chorus, which is my favorite chorus pedal that I've been using for a long time. Very lush, very vintage-sounding, um, like the old 70s choruses. It just has that lush – With and with any any great tone, it's going to inspire you. It's going to inspire you to play. So as I'm as I'm turning that on, I just I start going somewhere. I just, it takes me somewhere, and. The, like my compressor, the cool thing about this course is that it has two modes. Because that's the frustrating thing with, with some of these pedals is you want to be able to have these different settings. And so they give you the, the ability to have two different. So I'll usually set up the other channel to be a bit more wide or more modulated. Okay, so that's that's the dual chorus by uh, G and I. Love it, love that pedal, and I'll use that not only on uh, clean sounds, but I'll, I have a mid gain tone that I like to kick that in for certain phrases, and then on my full on distortion tone, it sounds great on there too. So it's a lot of fun and very flexible. Okay, now moving on to some gain. I'm going to start off with uh, keeping on the on the clean channel. And now I'm going to engage, I've got an old uh, Boss Blues Driver that was modded by the Keeley Company. So it's a Keeley modded Blues Driver. And if with my gain full up, you'll hear it's a fairly distorted sound. But I, I rarely use it, I rarely use it in that capacity. It's mainly used... Um, for tones like I got on uh, Gone on my Resolution record or She's Leaving Home off my Sgt. Pepper record um, or even the Prayer and the Answer from Resolution where, you know, the... Uh... And what I'm doing is that I'm using... There's, there, there's that much gain on the pedal. But I'm backing. I'm on my, my neck pickup and I'm backing my, my volume almost all the way off. Um, so... It gives me a very, I call it crystalline. It's a very top, you know, special, clear, bright tone that I wouldn't get on my clean channel or I wouldn't get with too much gain on, on the distortion or the amp. And I should also mention that on my, all my guitars, on the, on the main master volume, I have what's called a uh, high-pass filter, which basically enables me to retain the, the high end of my guitar because on a normal volume circuit we need the lower you get in the volume the top end will taper so um i have that little mod it's just a capacitor and a resistor put in line i, I don't i can't tell you the values but all this information is online you can find it so when i get all the way down on the volume top end is there and it's beautiful so
Or you can do the... Uh, Okay, so again, it's a matter of how, how I'm cleaning up the tone. And you really hear the, the finger on the fret and in the, in the dynamic of the note. If I just lightly brush the string, you get this nice glassy tone. A tone I use very much, and that also sounds nice with the. Uh, I'll, I'll use the uh, the GNI chorus on phrases uh, from my uh, Strawberry Fields uh, track when I do like. Uh, let's see. Just to punctuate certain phrases to give it that kind of guitar through a Leslie. Love that. Okay. Now let's get into the lead channel um, of the Lone Star. And like I did earlier, I just want to play you what that channel sounds like without any, any pedals turned on. Okay. This is just... Straight into the amp, Lone Star Lee channel, but I'll leave my echo on because that's what I like. It's it's almost too fat, but that's I, that's the way I set the amp because I usually don't use the amp just on the channel. I'll have a variety of different um, boosts or gains in front of it to help shape the sound and what I'm looking for. And like I mentioned the, mentioned earlier, the main thing I'm looking for in a lead tone is something that I'm able to be expressive with. It sings and is, is still pleasant to the ear because, again, the, the, the tendency with distortion, it can get very harsh and very bright. And I think the older that I get, I'm more sensitive to those sounds. But it's just something that over the years, too, my tastes have changed. And, you know, coming from days where some of my early tracks I, I recorded with a little Zoom box and it's pretty bright, you know. But I, earlier on in my career, I was more I was more concerned with the spirit of the performance, and of course, that's a wonderful thing to be concerned with. And I still choose that over anything else. I want the vibe. I want, you know, spirit behind what's going on. But you know, if you can have that and great tone, 
then that's even even more amazing. So here's again just that just the the lead channel on its own. But what what I do is I hit that with a, a vintage uh, tube screamer, the TS808. The new ones actually sound great too. They're just there's a little mojo with this old pedal that I found years ago. So now here's the tube screamer on front of that same sound you just heard. <laughs> got the, the gain on the pedal set about halfway and so you know that the old two screamer it's not like a lot of gain but it's just hitting the front end of the amp just right to give it a little more ease of playing tames the it handles the low end nicely it kind of tames it down a little bit and that's been my main lead sound for for quite a while now um in addition to that um i use my old uh gni multifuzz classic distortion multifuzz and this this is actually how i met the GNI company was through my good friend Sidney Cavallo, who um, was gracious enough. I was coming to Brazil. I don't even remember what year it was, but I had a one-off gig in Sao Paulo reuniting with uh, singer Ted Poli from Danger Danger. We were reuniting, and some local musicians were backing us up. And I had met Sidney at an AM show, and I guess we, we must have stayed in contact. And I reached out to him saying, hey, I'm coming to Sao Paulo. I need an amp, you know. And I knew he used I, – I was pretty sure he used Mesa Boogie. So he, he was kind enough to bring me his personal rectifier, you know, 50-watt head and a cabinet. And that, I think it was that day or later that evening, he gave me a gift of this pedal, this vintage distortion multifuzz, and said, here, you know, I, I've been working with these guys, these great pedal company, check it out. I'm like, oh, okay. And we were talking the other day how, you know, these days there's so many pedals out there. There's so many great pedal companies ma making stuff and, it's almost overwhelming sometimes, so it helps me when it's a close friend that I trust that says, you need to check this out. This is really cool. So he gave me this pedal as a gift, and I took it home, and I, uh, I plugged it in. And again, it has nice distortion sounds um, and, and a three-mode fuzz, right? A couple of classic fuzz sounds, but it was the third mode of the fuzz that I immediately found something that I use still to this day. And I'm a big fan of the Jimi Hendrix Octavia tone as Jimmy would have used on uh, like Purple Haze and stuff like that. It's kind of a ratty upper octave um, fuzz tone, and it's it's very difficult to get right. There's lots of Octavias out there. And I even have one of the old Roger Meyer. It looks like a spaceship, the silver spaceship. Uh, it, it's a wonderful pedal, but very volatile and very inconsistent. So this pedal has that sound in there, and I quickly realized this is the best one I've heard. I've tried all of them. This is my favorite one. Um, so anyway, let me demonstrate what that sounds like. If I and I'm going to add that, in addition to the, I'm on the lead channel of the Lone Star. I've got the tube screamer turned down, and now I'm going to uh, turn on the multi fuzz, and it sounds like. I also need to point out that one of the quirks of the Octavia sound is it sounds best on the neck pickup and 12 frets and above. I'm sure there's some very scientific reason for why that is, but I don't. I wouldn't know how to explain that. But just FYI, right? I mean, just amazing overtones. And, I, of course, I did go to the bridge pickup for a second, but that's just because I love to get – you might recognize I, I, I like noise. I like the energy of just complete chaos can bring as a tension builder. And then the release of let – me, let me demonstrate something like that. Off 
oftentimes I'm just hitting all the strings and letting my hands kind of control what notes come out. I love open strings with the bend to try to, like I say, just building that tension and that energy that can come from that. So again, that's an, that's another favorite pedal. Another pedal I've been using for lead tones is a custom pedal that I've, I've worked with a company called JHS back in the States. And uh, we may be releasing a version of this later as well. Um, which I should point out that the multifuss is going to come out in a limited edition through, through G and I, um, hopefully later this year, we're going to do a very special limited edition. Very proud of that, that relationship and that association. Um, here's a bit of that GHS. And this is a, this is a pedal that I can take really to any gig. If I'm not going to have my own amp, it's nice to have uh, a distortion pedal that you can get a nice lead tone out of, um, and this pedal, I've been working on quite a bit and I've really developed a... Again, that's on the clean channel. Very dynamic, very, very vocal quality. So anyway, good luck on your tone quest. I hope this has helped you in some small way. And I look forward to seeing you somewhere in Brazil soon. <laughs>